What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today's very exciting, it's new wheel day. Thrustmaster have got in touch and they have sent me their latest product, the Ferrari SF1000, which is a replica of their 2020 wheel. This is the first time for me and it's very exciting uh, where I'm getting a wheel that has an LCD screen and uh, yeah, this wheel is next level. I can't wait to unbox it for you guys. It's not even out yet, or it's out right now as I'm releasing this video. So um, yeah, it's very exciting. I'm gonna unbox it now, and then we're gonna play F1 2020 and see what it's like. So here she is. Huge thank you to Thrustmaster for sending me this. Um, they also sent me a couple of other wheel rims and uh, a wheelbase and pedals as well, so they really kitted me out and I've got options now going forward when it comes to sim racing, which is really cool. Got to try out their um, uh, load cell pedals, which will be uh, very interesting. But here we go, this is the unboxing of the product. Um, as I understand, there'll be very limited supply of this, so getting your hands on this uh, will be pretty difficult after release, so get in while you can. But here it is. The Ferrari, let me just take this strip off and we shall be good to go. I am a professional unboxer. Here it is, the box looks immaculate. Here it is, uh, Thrustmaster SF1000 Ferrari wheel. Man. And it comes with optional panels as well, which I will unbox after this. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty... It's a pretty beefy little unit. All right, how do we unbox this? There's a little tab which we pull here. Uh. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. Oh, it's upside down. We do not want that to fall face down on the floor. So, here we go. Push, that's that off. And uh, as we have over here, we take, oh, oh my goodness. We take the bubble wrap off. Thrustmaster, own the race. So that just sits nicely right there. We're gonna take that off. And that reveals the wheel rim, which looks absolutely stunning by the way. We've still got the, uh, the plastic cover over the LCD screen, which is nice to see. Everything is very well protected in this uh, like foam composite padding. We've even got uh, protection for this toggle switch here, which is really cool. And as far as I know, every single button is usable. Compare that to the old model. Now this is what I got signed by Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel, uh, Australian Grand Prix 2017. Half of these buttons and switches don't work. These are stickers, that's, that's nothing. This is real. So there you go. And you can even press inwards on these toggle switches. But yeah, comparison from old this is the 2011 wheel right here to 2020 with LCD screen and literally every button is usable. Um, very firm buttons, they don't feel uh, overly cheap. This D-pad here feels pretty, is, is plastic to be fair, but you know, D-pads are pretty versatile. That's probably the, the, the cheapest feeling thing on the wheel to be honest, maybe these, these are plastic too but they have a nice positive click about them, which is uh, what you want to see. Here are the paddle shifters, which are going to go at the back of the wheel. They go up a little bit higher and they'll be used for upshifting. What's confusing though is I got sent um, these as well. Um, and as far as I know, they look exactly the same. So, um, I don't know, I'll find a purpose for that potentially. But um, man, this thing, looks and feels so nice that I, I don't even want to get it out of the... <laughs> I just want to leave it there and preserve it forever. I, I It feels bad that I'm actually going to use this for sim racing. We're going to take the 
paddles out. So, like I said, these will go at the back of the wheel and I'll figure out how to install these. But uh, yeah, it's all work in progress. Let's put you over here. And inside we have the wheel add-on. So we open this up and we have a fancy Thrustmaster member card, which uh, I've never received before. And it's got a, it's got a QR code on the back, so I won't show that, <laughs> just in case it's something special. Um, then here we have a smaller box. I, I feel like there should be a diamond ring in here or something, potentially. Uh, let's open her up. We've got a USB to USB-C cable. Uh, my webcam focuses a little bit better, but that's that. Also in here we have an Allen key and a few screws. So that's that. I'm guessing that's yeah, how we install the paddles to the wheel. And also inside we have just basic instructions, essentially, right there. Lovely stuff. And also more of the same. Basically how to screw it on and get it in, basically. And now, finally, I'm going to uh, to pull this bad boy out. So, here we go. I'm doing this very awkwardly. Let's do it this way, where we know it's going to be safe. Oh my goodness, it's got a really distinct smell to it. It's got that new wheel smell. And I think it's all down to the handles. The handles feel very unique. Um... I couldn't even tell you what that feeling is. But here's the clutch paddles, left and right. They feel quite nice. Quite a bit of travel in them compared to uh, the Fanatec ones. They actually feel really nice. But yeah, in terms of a, a product, Thrustmaster have really upped this to the next level. It's not overly heavy, I will say. Feels pretty light, lightish, but of really solid build quality. That's something I probably could have criticized Code Ma uh, Code Masters. That's something I probably could have criticized Thrustmaster on in the past, but the finish on this is incredible. I'll have a picture on screen as well of like all the button mappings that this wheel can do uh, natively on F1 2020 for PC. Um, it's crazy. You can use all these different toggle switches for like. Uh, ERS and, and fuel mixes, brake bias, I think that ERS and fuel is here. It's not going to be on the screen, but there's all crazy ones, pit limiter, yeah, and it's, it's all unique, so, yeah, could potentially be a big advantage for people who have a wheel like this, or wheels with a ton of buttons, because then you can use, delegate each button separately, so that you don't have to flick around with just the D-pad to sort out things basically. There is so many buttons, like too many buttons for me to poke a stick at. So that's the wheel. I am going to try and install the paddle shifters now. So it turns out the, the micro USB or USB-C uh, plug is for here. I don't know why that is. Maybe for uh, software updates uh, with computer uh, whenever they come out but uh, yeah just interesting to know anyway here we go let's line this up um, it's just slots in really easily like that and now I'm just gonna screw the screws in so I'm normally not that good with tools and stuff but that literally took me like two minutes tops and uh, we have the, uh, the rear plate on for the paddle shifters. They're gonna do a first click. And that's what it sounds like. Nice feel. It's one of those uh, paddle shifters that where you pull on one end, um, the one that isn't pulled will, will move forwards, if that makes sense. Which, um, you know, if you're not used to that, that's a bit of a shock to the system, but otherwise, it's fine. It's been a while since I've uh, 
put a Thrustmaster wheel on. I actually don't know how this goes. I'm used to a uh, quick release system, which is, yeah, one thing that Thrustmaster still don't have because they've got to uh, accommodate their older products, but a quick release system is much nicer, I'll be honest. I haven't properly screwed you on yet. Oh, it works. Oh, it's shiny. <laughs> Hello, you can see me. Ah, that's not what we want. But there it is. Oh, yeah. Before we get into a race, let's quickly show you guys how to navigate through the menu on uh, the LCD screen. So basically, you push in this button, brings up the menu. Uh, you can connect to Wi-Fi if you want to run the wheel in UDP mode, I believe, which is like a, I think a compatibility mode, which enables the, the wheel uh, interface to be compatible with older games, like F1 2019, for example. There we go. Then this is where you can toggle it on or off, etc. Um, but yeah, connect to Wi-Fi. You can see uh, what firmware you've got going. Um, connections to other uh, devices and such. Uh, you can adjust the brightness of the screen and various other things which I am much too unqualified to, uh, to tell you guys about but I just thought I'd mention that this is how you do it and uh, you can navigate through here and uh, on the screen right here uh, this tells you exactly all the different functionality uh, buttons for the in-wheel in menu. Oh yes. Confidential. I mean it was, but it's 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 not anymore. Okay, I've booted up F1 and uh, the wheel is now running. Uh, in the up position, this is the default screen that you see. And this is really interesting as well because I feel like I get extra access to game information that we would not have otherwise known uh, because this wheel can dip into, I don't know, background settings in the game basically. So. These are the different uh, screens that we can see. I'm just gonna flick through them slowly. Uh, this is the one that uh, most looks like F1 2020. Uh, but there's some pretty crazy stuff in here. Uh, let's see if I can go back and find it, basically. You can see we're on a four minute lap time at Monza. This is, uh, this is going rather well, 100% uh, tire life still left in the car here. It tells us we've got 9% fuel left and uh, 90 degree engine temps. So that's the settings that time trial is based on. Oh yeah, the tires are at 100 degrees all round, all four tires. So that's what it's locked to in game and we're in mode two for ERS. I don't know, just that's just how time trial, oh, press the button. That's just how time trial works. Um, Cause I didn't know these settings of what the, what the different units they were running in the background, but there you go. All right, so we're here for a race in Monza. Um, we're gonna test out the wheel and see how it goes in action, basically. So I've got a camera looking at me right there on screen there, and I've got a camera behind me, so you can see kind of what's going on with the wheel. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you guys my live reaction to uh, how it all feels, so my very first race, I did maybe three corners in time trial just to make sure it was working, but we are ready to go. We're driving a Charles Leclerc at Monza in the Ferrari. I couldn't have picked anyone else, but we are ready to start this race. We are off here in Monza. Now let's see if we can get this thing away. Um, actually, I, need, I should do it like, oh no, that's my fuel mix. I can, I can manually adjust my fuel and ERS modes uh, with the little thumb switches, which is something that I'm not used to. Okay, up into rich and great bias is on that. Okay, this is a bit of a nightmare, but once we get this sorted out, we'll be okay. As like, this is gonna be a real big advantage to people once they get used to it because you've got so much information 
on your screen right in front of you. But you, with this wheel, you can also have things like tire attempts up on screen. You can flick through the various different menus and see what your sector times are like. Um, it's it's pretty crazy. As well as being able to control your ERS and fuel mixes, brake bias, differential. With all these other buttons, once you get used to it, you're going to be absolutely sorted. Okay, this is overtake. K2 is overtake. Alright, we're in the money now. As you can hear, Thrustmaster have got a really loud, positive click, so there should be no mistake as to when you're shifting gears. And it does feel really nice. You can see right here the overtake status, uh, the ERS status, is exactly the same as what you'll see on the in-game wheel, which is actually really, really cool. I guess only time will tell as to whether that's going to be overly useful or not. Because I, I imagine some people won't want to look down at their screen, they'll want to look up at uh, their in-game screen. But if you're sitting in, say, like a play seat, where your wheel is sitting a lot higher and a lot more in your eye line than, than what it would be in a conventional wheel stand, then that's going to be a lot more useful, as opposed to me, as we're getting overtaken by Gasly and Signs now down into the first chicane. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not doing this wheel justice with my driving right now but these are the kind of things that come with time and I believe that I could be a lot more handy in league races and dynamic scenarios when I've got all this extra information at my at my fingertips thumb grips feel really nice I'm not sure that this is the this is an Alcantara uh, material so you I don't feel like you need to wear gloves so the thought of putting on sim racing gloves uh, is, I don't know, doesn't, you don't like that, then this might be the wheel for you because you, I feel like you don't need them. Uh, I don't think these grips will wear away with your hands. I'm noticing already how much nicer that is to just flick through that with your thumb to go up in the fuel mixers. That is really nice. And this is not only exclusive to F1 that you can use this. I'm sure you can use this on a set of Corsa, iRacing, whatever you like. And being able to have all these buttons at your ready is going to be so good. So I can't wait to try this wheel properly in, uh, in a full race scenario or on iRacing in, in an endurance scenario. And I'll let you know how I get on with it. Anyway, we're on the last lap. Still getting used to the wheel and the feel and everything. Um, of course, the force feedback is not going to come through the wheel rim. Uh, that ultimately depends on the wheel base that you have. Uh, but the one that I've got today is the Thrustmaster TSXW. So it's the one that's uh, compatible on both PC and on Xbox. So you can use this on Xbox as well, by the way. Uh, provided that you have this wheelbase and I tell you what if you've got this wheel on console what a flex that would be on your friends here comes an overtake side by side through Ascari we've extended a little bit there I'm low on fuel I haven't managed anything to perfection in this race I'm not even sure what the look back button is but Valtteri Bottas has won we're going to come around the final corner now, hopefully not run out of fuel here in Monza. I'm not done the Tifosi proud here today. It's a learning experience, but uh, we will get there eventually. Across the line, and we've lost the two spots, the three maybe. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Pompfer. Wow, I'll need to get confirmation on that. But, uh, <laughs> wow, I had no pace in that race. Getting used to a new wheel is always very, very tough. So in the end, it was 14th place. Uh, we didn't get jumped by Raikkonen, and we only just finished ahead of him. But uh, I guess I'll have to take it. But regardless, I had so much fun.
trying out the new wheel. Honestly, it's amazing uh, that we're able to have so much information uh, sitting right in front of you now. Being able to flick through all these menus like a real F1 driver. Sim racing just continues to blow me away with the tech and innovation and keeps coming out in everyday products. And uh, yeah, I am really excited to see where this goes in the years to come. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Thrustmaster as well for uh, sending me all this kit. And um, I'm very, very grateful. I'm definitely going to keep this as an important part of the setup. It just looks so amazing. Not every day you can say you've got a Ferrari F1 wheel. That in itself, even if it was on display, it would probably be worth it. It's, uh, there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys for a brand new video very soon.